morning, everyone, and welcome to The Water's Edge. Whether you're joining us online through Facebook or YouTube, or if you're right here with us in person, we're so delighted to have you this morning. If you're joining virtually, remember to hit that like button, share our content, and drop a comment below to let us know you're here. If you have little ones, our nursery and kids church are set up just across the lobby, providing a safe and engaging environment for all of them. The heart of our community is our volunteers, and we're always looking for more passionate individuals to join us. To get involved, simply scan the barcode on the screen or text the word volunteer to 884-793-7384. Let's not forget that we're a welcoming space for everyone, especially those facing challenges. If you know someone in need, extend an invitation to join us in person or let them know about our online content. Get ready for an uplifting experience this morning as we come together for worship and receive a powerful message from Pastor Tony. What's up, everyone? Good morning. If you're in-house today and you're seeing this on the big screen, this is what that means. I had surgery on my shoulder this week, and it means I was just too loopy and in too much pain to get up this morning and come preach to you guys. But I'm here with you in my heart on the big screen, and so thank you for the prayers. We're going to have an amazing service. But it also means this. If you're watching this online, that just means that you're still watching this from your porch or your couch with a cup of coffee. Regardless, I want to say this. Thank you so very much for inviting people and sharing these services with your circle of influence. For those of you that continue to invite people to our in-person services. Thank you so very much for doing that. We have new people every week, but also we have new people tuning in every week. And also for those of you that continue to show up every week and worship with us through giving and generosity, or for those of you that do that online, thank you so very much for doing that. You allow our gathering to continue to exist, to help more people, love more people, feed more people, and serve more people. So once again today, welcome to the Water's Edge. Grace and peace to you all. This is a place where we love everyone, we welcome everyone, we try to serve everyone. Everyone is welcome in here today because of the love of God. Today we continue with our current series entitled The Search Party, and this study is all about this. What are you really looking for in this life? What are you and I really searching for in this life? And what are some of the things that we absolutely need to find in this life? And also, what are some of the things that we absolutely need to lose in this life? You know, sometimes somebody can tell you something and it just brings panic to your heart. Sometimes you can get a phone call or you can get some news and it just brings anxiety or worry to your soul and panic to your heart. This has happened to me a few times. Let me tell you a story. In fact, one time I remember very specifically when this happened and it just brought fear and panic to my heart. As most of you know, I grew up in De Quincey and in De Quincey and in the outskirts of De Quincey, that big metropolis over there, there's all these woods out there. The perfect place for people just to go out and walk through the trails and go squirrel hunting if they want to. People do all kinds of things in the woods in De Quincey. Sometimes people go out there and they hunt. And I remember several years ago when I was in college, I was still living in De Quincey, going to McNeese, commuting back and forth, and my friends were too. And one time, one day, one morning, two of my best friends decided to go out into the woods in the outskirts of De Quincey to go squirrel hunting. And one of them was a very severe diabetic. Now you have to understand, this was way back in the 90s, and we didn't really really have cell phones back then. And if you did have a big car phone, it wasn't going to work way out there in the woods. If you had a beeper, it wasn't going to work way out there in the woods. And so if you got lost in those woods, there was really no way for you to get a hold of someone. And there was really no way for someone to get a hold of you. If they find you, they had to go searching for you or you just better not get lost. And so two of my best friends back then, Stevie and Kevin, decided one morning to wake up, drive out to the woods on the outskirts of De Quincey, walk through those 
chattrails and go squirrel hunting. They got up early in the morning. They went out there and they were going all day. And I remember they were going hour after hour after hour. And then the sun went down and I started getting phone calls from our friends. Hey, have you heard from Kevin? Have you seen Stevie? Do you know where they're at? They went hunting this morning. They went into the woods. We haven't heard from them. We can't find them. We don't know what's going on. And one of them was a very severe diabetic and they didn't have any food on them. They had been gone all day. The sun was going down. It was nighttime and they still hadn't come home. And so man, hour after hour after hour passed by and about the middle of the night, our church was in a panic. Our friends were in a panic. My family was in a panic. Their families were in a panic. So we all decided to get together and go searching for them, a search party. And so, man, we drive out there, we find their truck, we're screaming their names, we're yelling their names, and guess what? We can't find them. We go out into the woods, this search party, we're yelling for them, searching for them, looking for them, and we still can't find them. We don't hear their voices, we don't see their tracks, we have no idea what's going on with them. And so man, we are just thinking that the worst case scenario happened. We have no idea what's going on, but we've lost our best friends. Until the next morning, finally they made it out of the woods. And this is what had happened. They got so turned around in the woods when they were hunting, they got lost and they started walking in the opposite direction. And when they finally came out of the woods the next morning, they had walked all night trying to find that certain trail that was gonna bring them back to their truck that they parked on the side of the road right in front of that trail. They walked all night trying to find that trail and they couldn't find it because they were walking in the opposite direction. And when they finally made their way out of the woods, they were 15 miles on the other side of the woods away from their truck. And so they just started walking down the road, just started walking down the street, trying to make it back home after being lost all day and all night. Finally, someone driving by saw them, picked them up and brought them back to their truck and they made it back home. And we all took a deep breath. And sometimes in this life, we feel the same way. It's like we're lost in the woods. Sometimes in this life, we feel the same way, like we're lost in the dark. We have no direction. We have no way of seeing the light. We have no way of finding our way back home. We have no way of feeling safe again. Sometimes in this life, we can go through different things, circumstances, storms and battles that make us feel so lost, lost in our soul, lost in our heart, lost in our mind, lost in our emotions. It crushes our self-esteem. It crushes our self-worth. We feel lost on the inside and it pushes us to find this strength deep on the inside of us to keep fighting over and over and over over again until we finally get free. It pushes us to tap into this endurance on the inside of us, this spirit on the inside of us that loves God, that pushes us to keep fighting over and over and over again until we finally get set free. But it's easy to get lost when you walk around in the dark. By the way, today's gonna be a bit personal because let me ask you this question. Has something ever happened to you that just crushed your self-esteem? Has something ever happened to you that just crushed your self-confidence and your self-worth, the view of who you are? It just crushed your view of yourself, of your future, of your past, of your potential. It just devastated you. It devastated the way you view yourself, the way you see yourself, and the way you love yourself. And it just makes everything dark. Have you ever been lost in those woods? I remember when I was a little boy, man, we used to love to play hide and go seek. We used to love to do that. And I remember one night I was at my best friend Kent's house. Me and all my friends were there and all of our parents were there. And we decided when the sun went down to go outside and play hide and go seek in the backyard in the dark. And my friend Kent, his dad had this big trailer with this big long hitch at the end of it that was up against the house. And underneath the trailer was the perfect place to hide in the dark when you're playing hide and go seek. And so, man, we're all running around trying to find places to hide. One person is counting. That person is it. And as soon as they finish counting. They're running around trying to tag us, trying to find us. And one of my friends, his name was Sam. He was running full speed and he was going to run and he was going to slide underneath that trailer to hide underneath that trailer in the dark. And as he's running towards that trailer to slide underneath it, he didn't make it in time. And his head hit that hitch right in the forehead, head on, split his head wide open. But that's what happens when you're in the dark. You can't see the light. 
That's what happens when you're in the dark. You run into danger and you run into pain and you run into heartache. And I have a feeling this has happened to many of us in here today. The question is, how do you find your way out of the darkness and how do you find your way out of the woods? And how do you get that part of yourself back that you've lost? How do you get that part of your heart back that you've lost? Your self-esteem, how do you get it back? Your faith, how do you get it back? Your self-worth, how do you get it back? The love that you had for yourself, How do you get that back when you feel lost in the darkness of your circumstances, lost in the darkness of your heartache, lost in the darkness of your pain, when you're devastated on the inside? How do you get your identity back? How do you get your strength back? How do you get your endurance back? How do you get your purpose back? And how do you get your focus back? Let me tell you another story if you're still with me. Sam's still with you. Luke chapter eight, verses 40 through 48. On the other side of the lake, the crowds welcomed Jesus because they had been waiting for him. Then a man named Jairus, a leader of the local synagogue, came and fell at the feet of Jesus, pleading with him to come home with him. His only daughter, who was about 12 years old, was dying. As Jesus went with him, he was surrounded by the crowds. Now notice what happens next because someone in this crowd is on a search. Someone in this crowd needs Jesus. Someone in this crowd has lost parts of herself, parts of her self-esteem, parts of her life, parts of her purpose, parts of her future, parts of her significance in this life. A woman in the crowd has suffered for 12 years with a disease of constant bleeding. They could find no cure. Coming up behind Jesus, she touched the fringe of his robe. Immediately, the bleeding stopped. Who touched me, Jesus asked. Everyone denied it. And Peter said, Master, this whole crowd is pressing up against you. But Jesus said, someone deliberately touched me, for I felt healing power go out from me. When the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble. She fell to her knees in front of Jesus. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed. Daughter, Jesus said to her, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Do you see where it says that she searched for Jesus and that she got down and she touched the edge of his robe or the fringe of his garment or the fringe of his cloak? Back in the days of Jesus, a rabbi would wear something called a seat seat or a prayer shawl. And this is what that prayer shawl was. That prayer shawl fit over your robe and the edges of your robe and the edges of the prayer shawl was known as your wings, the wings of the rabbi or the wings of the teacher. Check this verse out. This was actually a prophecy found about Jesus in the Old Testament, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus was born. In fact, this was the very last prophecy that we find about Jesus in the Old Testament before Jesus showed Shows up in the New Testament. Notice this today, Malachi chapter four, verse two. But for you who fear my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings and you will go free, leaping for joy like calves who just got let out of their cage, who just got let out to pasture. Jesus will have healing in his wings. Jesus will bring healing to our heart if we follow him, healing to our soul if we follow him, healing to our esteem if we follow him, healing to our mind and our emotions if we follow him and healing to our significance if we follow him. And what did this lady with this disease touch? The fringe of his robe, the fringe of his prayer shawl, the very edge of his garment. And I know what some of you are thinking, Tony, what in the world does that mean? Well, it means this, that deep down this lady went searching for Jesus because she believed that Jesus was the son of God. Deep down, she went searching for Jesus because she believed that Jesus was the son of righteousness and that the word of God was talking about Jesus and that the word of God was saying that Jesus was the son of God. She believed the prophecies about Jesus and all Ultimately, she believed this, that nothing in this world could heal her soul except for Jesus Christ. Nothing in this world could heal her esteem except for Jesus Christ. Nothing in this world could heal her self-worth except for Jesus Christ. And so she went on a search. And just like Zacchaeus, she had to get past the crowds, the crowds of people that were trying to keep her away from Jesus. And sometimes religion does the same thing to us. Religion tries to push us away from Jesus and it tries to keep up from Jesus. You're not good 
good enough for us. You're not good enough for God. You don't fit in with us. You're an outcast. You're a reject. And sometimes we have to push past all those opinions and all that tradition and all that religion and go searching for Jesus because at the end of the day, it's not rules that heals our soul. It's not tradition that heals our soul. It's not religion that heals our soul. Only a relationship with Jesus Christ can bring healing to our life, our soul, our feelings, our mind, and our emotions. And so she went searching for Jesus so she could make her way out of those woods and so she could make her way out of that darkness and find her life and her joy and her confidence and her love for herself and her esteem and her self-worth again through Jesus and through his love. Let me ask you a question. What do you think your life is worth? How valuable do you think your life really is? Some of you today think your life is worth nothing because of your past. You think your life is worth nothing because of your reputation. You think your life was worth nothing because of your mistakes or because of your guilt or because of your shame or because of your failures or just because of your circumstances and your storms that you didn't cause or you can't control. Some of you today aren't convinced that your life is worth something because you feel lost. You feel lost in the darkness. It feels like you're lost in the woods and you can't reach out to anyone and you can't find your way back home. Some of you today don't understand how valuable you really are. And so you've been crushed on the inside and you continue to sink lower and lower and lower in that darkness. When your self-worth is devastated and crushed, what do you think your life is worth? When your self-confidence is devastated and crushed, what do you think your life is worth? When your self-esteem has been devastated and crushed, what do you think your life is worth? Notice this today if you're still with me. Sam's still with you. First Peter chapter one, verses 18 through 20. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors in this world. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb of God. God shows him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days, he has been revealed for your sake. Listen to me. This is how much your life is worth. It's worth the price of God's son. God bought your life with the blood of Jesus because your soul is worth the price of God's son. Your heart to God is worth the price of his son. Your life to God is worth the price of his son. This is how valuable your life is. Just look at the cross. He loved us so much that he paid for our life with his very own blood. And that's how valuable your life is. The Bible says over and over again that our relationship with Jesus Christ brings us out of the darkness and brings us into the light. When we really follow Jesus and experience the love of Jesus and worship Jesus and have a relationship with Jesus Christ and draw near to God and God draws near to us, then he brings us out of the darkness of our storms. He brings us out of the darkness of our circumstances. He brings us out of the darkness of our guilt. He brings us out of the darkness of our shame. He brings us out of the darkness of our past. He brings us out of the darkness of our regrets. He brings us out of the darkness of our mistakes over and over and over again. He brings us out of those woods and the darkness of our crushed self-esteem and our crushed self-worth and our crushed self-confidence. And he brings us out of that darkness over and over and over again when we follow him. And so understanding all of that, I want to teach you a few steps today to help you reclaim your self-worth and to help you reclaim your self-confidence and to help you build back up and reclaim your self-esteem. Today, we're going to go on a search, a search party to recover that which is lost and some of you today have lost your self-esteem. It's been crushed. It's been devastated by this world. You have lost your self-worth. It's been crushed and devastated by this world. You have lost your self-confidence and your self-love. It's been crushed and devastated by this world. And through the love of Jesus and through a relationship with Jesus Christ, I just want to teach you a few personal observations today to help us get us back. And so if you're still with me, say I'm still with you. The first step is this. We need acceptance and reflection. Look at me right now. Don't ignore the pain that you're in. Don't ignore it. Ignoring the pain that you're in is not going to help you heal. This is what you do. It's your starting point. If you accept it and you reflect on it, then this is where you start. This is what my friend Stevie and Kevin had to do when they were lost in the woods. We don't know which way to go. They had to admit that. 
They had to admit that they're lost in the woods, lost in the darkness. We messed up. We went the wrong direction. We got turned around. That's what happens when you run around in the dark. You run into danger. We have to admit that and not be overwhelmed with self-guilt and regret and just start right here. This is my starting point. I feel lost right now. I accept that and I'm starting right here to make my way out of those woods and out of that darkness. So understand that setbacks are a part of life and they do not define your self-worth in the eyes of God. They do not define your self-confidence in the eyes of God because your life is worth the price of God's son. Acceptance and reflection of your hurt and your pain is your starting point. The next step is this, if you're still with me, Sam's still with you. We need self-compassion and forgiveness. Everyone faces moments of doubt. Everyone faces moments of pain and heartache and confusion and uncertainty. Understand that and show compassion to yourself. Give yourself some grace. If a holy God's gonna give you grace, how dare you not give yourself some grace? Give yourself some mercy today. If a holy God in heaven, a holy God in heaven is gonna give you mercy and love, then give yourself some mercy today and give yourself some forgiveness today. If a holy God can send his son to die on the cross to forgive you, then you have to learn how to forgive yourself and let it go. You got to understand something that you are worth the price of God's son. Practice forgiveness, practice forgiveness, practice forgiveness with yourself and also those people that have hurt you. You don't have to reconcile that relationship back to where it used to be, but you do have to forgive. Jesus loves you so much that he died for you. You are worth the price of God's son. Forgive yourself, but also look right here. Those very people that hurt you, Jesus died for them too. And they are worth the price of God's son. I think sometimes we're tempted to think that we're part of God's favorites and that God's on our side. Someone hurts us and something bad happens to them and we secretly think, yeah, something bad happened to them because they hurt me. No, Jesus Christ died to forgive you, but he also died for those people that hurt you. And you've heard me say before that you are never more like Jesus than when you forgive, but you are never more unlike Jesus than when you don't forgive. And so practice forgiveness over and over again because you are worth the price of God's son, but so is everyone else. And the last step out of the darkness today is this. The last step out of those woods today is this. If you're still with me, Sam's still with you. Action and growth. We have to take action and we have to grow. Take steps through your relationship with Jesus Christ to rebuild your faith. Take steps through your relationship with Jesus Christ and your worship of Jesus Christ and walking with Jesus Christ to rebuild your self-esteem, to rebuild your self-worth, to get your self-confidence back. Set small, realistic goals for yourself. Small, realistic goals for yourself. And when you meet them and you have victories, celebrate them over and over and over again. You are worth the price of God's son. Pull your life in the things that bring you joy. Pull your life in the things that bring you happiness. Pull your life in the things that bring you purpose and significance. Pull your life in the things that bring you closer to Jesus and closer to God over and over and over again. Why? Because trust me, we only have one life and our life is short. Moses said this, Lord, teach us to number our days because our life is short so we can apply our hearts to wisdom. In the New Testament, James, the half brother of Jesus said this, what is your life but a mist, a vapor, a fog that's here today and then it's gone tomorrow. We have one life to live and it's short. Pour your heart into what brings you joy, purpose and significance and what brings you closer to God. Why? Because you're worth the price of God's son and growth only happens outside of your comfort zone. So push yourself. You're worth the price of God's son. Challenge yourself. You're worth the price of God's son. Endure. You're worth the price of God's son. Persevere past that pain. You're worth the price of God's son. Keep making your way out of that woods. Keep making your way out of that darkness. Why? Because you're worth the price of God's son. And through perseverance and endurance, if you keep searching for Jesus over and over again, you will experience that healing in your soul. Your worth is not determined by what has happened to you because some things have happened to you that have been very painful. Look at me right now. Your worth is not determined by by what has happened to you. Your worth is determined by what happened to someone else 2,000 years ago on the cross. 
Jesus Christ. You know, we don't celebrate Jesus because of all the crucifixions in history that Rome did. We celebrate Jesus because of one crucifixion. And that was the crucifixion of Jesus where he bought my life and he paid for your life with his very own blood on the cross. Your life is worth the price of God's son. You say, Tony, I wanna get my self-esteem back. I wanna get my confidence back. Accept what has happened to you. Reflect on it. Worship Jesus. Draw close to Jesus. Make, make a plan of growth and action and make your way out of that darkness and follow Jesus out of those woods. As you make your way to him, he starts to heal our mind and heal our soul and bring purpose back to our heart and significance back to our life. And this is why we worship him. And this is why we can stand up today and fight against every single storm that comes our way and never quit and never back up and never give up. And even when we get lost in the darkness, even when we turn our own life around and we make the mistakes and we place ourselves in those situations that just devastate us on the inside, pick yourself back up again because Jesus loves you with all of his heart and he proved that on the cross. Your life is worth the price of God's son. And so pull your life into things that bring you closer to God and put life in your soul. We're so thankful that you showed up today. We absolutely love you. Let's pray and then stay tuned for an amazing time of worship with the amazing Water's Edge worship team. Father, today we come to you in the name of Jesus. We absolutely love you. Thank you for being a God of grace. Thank you for being the God of love. Thank you for being the God of mercy. Thank you for being alive. Thank you for speaking to us today and leading us out of those woods and leading us out of that darkness. In your heart and in a relationship with you, we find healing for our soul, healing for our mind, healing for our self-worth and healing for our self-esteem. We love you, Jesus, and we worship you today.
message from Pastor Tony. We sincerely hope that today's worship experience has left you feeling encouraged and inspired. If you found a connection in the service and want to stay engaged throughout the week, check us out on social media at Water's Edge Gathering on Facebook or Water's Edge underscore LC on Instagram. For a more interactive experience, consider downloading our app. It enables you to participate in online giving, enjoy worship songs, and replay messages from Pastor Tony. Whether you're curious about salvation and baptism, interested in volunteering, or have a prayer request, make your way over to our Welcome Center in the lobby. Simply scan the barcode and our dedicated volunteers will be ready to assist you. We genuinely love and appreciate each and every one of you, and we look forward to welcoming you back next week at the Water's Edge, where everyone finds a meaningful place to belong.